Hi, um, I'm Michael Storsley, Superintendent of Grays Lake High School District 127, and this is the first episode of D127 Gets Real. The idea behind this podcast is to talk to people in our district, whether it's adults or kids, who are doing interesting things and just talking about who they are, what they do, why they do it. So I will let our first esteemed guests introduce themselves. So who are you and what is your position? I am Deanna Rep, and I am the Student Life Coordinator at Grays Lake Central. And I'm Keely Naughton, and I'm the Student Life Coordinator at Grays Lake North. So before you did, we'll talk about what Student Life Coordinator is um, and kind of how it came about. What did you all do before you were doing this particular job? Uh, I was hired in 2009 as a math teacher. At Central? At Central, okay. yes. Uh, and I taught... AAT and AMDM, intermediate. I loved it. So math is kind of what started me here. Hmm. And then in 2012, I think it was, I became the activities director that was part time with teaching hmm. math. So I got to have like the best of both worlds. I felt that that time was teaching and then getting involved with students outside of the classroom. Hmm. I was hired at Grays Lake North in 2013 as an English teacher and the varsity dance coach. And then I went, I was in English for, I think it was about seven or eight years and then transitioned into the AIM program, uh, which is our intervention program as a literacy interventionist. And then I think it was the fall of 2021 um, is when I became the activity director at North. So, okay, so we've got kind of like left brain, right brain. We've got math teacher, English teacher, mm -hmm. which is good. Kind of nice, <laughs> yes. nice how that worked out. We bounce off of um, each other. <laughs> yeah, so when you were doing student activities before it morphed into student life, what, what was student activities and how is that different now? How, how does student life coordinator compare to what you are doing before? I think from my perspective, not being in it as long as Deanna has been, I think with the activities piece, it was solely focused on how can I support students in clubs, activities, and the sponsors. Mm -hmm. And really, that's all the time kind of allowed for. Um, and now with the expansion of this position, I think it allows for more of culture building mm -hmm. um, and really creating an experience for students and staff from the moment of freshman orientation all the way through graduation. Cool. It's kind of the big picture. Yeah, I think time of just being able to do better with student activities mm -hmm. as part of it. But I think a lot of my time is with more face-to-face -face time with students mm -hmm. because before I was also in the classroom. And so it's time where kids can come to our office and find us where it's not just, not that we couldn't before, but it was a lot more dealing with the adults of the sponsors in charge of the clubs. Now I think I get to work with the students a little bit more. And also if students aren't in a club, it's really great to be able to just mm. work with students that maybe there's a reason they can't be involved before or after school in a club or a sport and this is opportunity to give them more leadership skills service opportunities um, and also getting to work with department chairs so it's all student life it's including curriculum it's including after school mm. stuff so i think we're just scratching the surface of learning more about that this year yeah, so this is the first year it's a student mm -hmm. life coordinator, and we're recording this in October, so it's just kind of <laughs> yeah. brand new. Yeah. So there, you know, you guys, it sounds like, I mean, it's a work in progress. It's always yeah. going to be kind of uh, yeah. just coming up with different ways to get students involved. So. And that's been nice, having time to even just sit down and look at data and figure out who is involved, who isn't, mm -hmm. and why are these students not involved, and then how can we kind of pull them into the community? Um, because before... You know, we, we tried to do that, but it was just, it was more limited. Yeah. So how do you, I mean, how do you go about doing that? Let's say you're looking at some data and you've got a chunk of kids that are like, wow, these kids are not involved in anything. And if we know anything about research and, you know, student success, like students who are involved in something are much more likely to graduate and do well and all that kind of stuff. So it's, this isn't just fun stuff. It's like it really, yeah. really matters. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think. We're still at the beginning phases of trying to get a lot of that data. Yeah. Using our school has been like our main drive this year. Mm -hmm. So anyone that signs up for a, a sport typically has to register. And now we're having clubs have to register mm -hmm. so that all student involvement, whether it's club or sport, is in one space. Um, so I think that has been really helpful. And then right now I'm actually working 
trying to work with AIM of figuring out is there students in AIM that aren't involved mm -hmm. and then working with students in different pieces of our building yeah. to find out are they involved in clubs and if not why and trying to figure out where those gaps are. I think another thing we both did early on um, is the first day of school we sent out a student interest survey and that was really helpful to see yeah. student names that were interested in this, this, and this, but then they didn't appear on any roster. And so looking at that and having those conversations with their counselors, social workers, the kids, their parents, um, and figuring out you have these interests, we have these things to offer, where's kind of that disconnect? Um, yeah, that was huge. We've done activity fairs in the beginning of the school year and we knew normally get a couple hundred kids will sign up and say they're interested because we did it on the first day and we had like this common message that day we each got like a thousand kids over a thousand kids like, yeah. clicked on i might be interested in this um and like that was just at least one club like they could have selected more but that's yeah. how many students signed up We've so that, never had that, that number was huge <laughs> we're awesome. really excited yeah. yeah so what are some of the activities on, again this is the first three months of you doing this but like kind of what what new activities and events have you either done already, uh, implemented already, or what are you looking forward to? I, Keely mentioned the first day of school, like that was mm -hmm. like I think a big culture change for us, like we just yeah. totally revamped the first day of school. Every kid saw all of their teachers and there was a lesson each period, so that was um, just something that was different that I think kick-started off the school year of mm -hmm. every kid and every staff member heard the same message. Do you remember kind of what some of those lessons were yeah some of it was just like about school culture and like mm -hmm. a little bit of expectations of like this is what it means to be in the ramley or part of night nation or yeah. you know whatever um our school was focusing on um we focused a lot on extracurricular so there's a whole period that they had to focus on athletics activities looking at our websites and social medias we had um just some kind of new safety structures and expectations that we went over um, and we tried to have a little fun with it too. We had like all school rock, paper, scissors, just some friendly competition. Um, really having the kids and the staff enjoy their first day here, mm -hmm. get to know each other, um, and make it a welcoming place for everyone. That and was then something. Ending with an assembly. Yeah. Like that's something we always like assembly. wanted to do. We did like Happy New Year for the first day of school to like kick off the first day and ending the day like that was fun. Um, How did that work out? The Happy New Year piece. It, it was good. It was good. I, like there was a countdown, and the kids like count, like did the ten nine. Like Some that was, thought it was a little cheesy, but I love yeah. It. But, I think yeah, definitely. There's always going to be mixed opinions. That's what <laughs> on I was, Everything. Yeah, that's what I was asking because yeah. I felt like you guys were a little nervous about that, but yeah. all the feedback I heard was like that was great. It was a great metaphor and. You know, just and fun. we got into it. it was, yeah. it's fun. Oh my yeah. God. We tried to do the streamer thing that made it look like fireworks. <laughs> like we had fireworks on the screen. Oh, okay. Like yeah. as the countdown went down, but like some of the streamers didn't really get released and it looked yeah. kind of weird, but no one knew what it was supposed to look like. Okay. So it was really just us, not. A couple of students <laughs> yeah. asked why we're doing this because like New Year it's is August. January. <laughs> like, but they all kind of rolled with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think just having a theme that got us excited, got them excited, yeah. but um, for the first time doing it, like I think like anything, there's stuff that we would want to change or yeah. improve, you know, improve, but um, I think that was new for us to do that mm -hmm. we've been wanting to try. Um, so, and then just, you know, the school year always starts off with focus on homecoming. It's just that's mm -hmm. how students get involved their first yeah. few weeks and ours were later this year. So I think just a lot of build up to homecoming mm -hmm. um, helped us have a really successful week i think yeah i think also we attended um a justin's global conference in um, texas this summer and i think something you and i both took away from that is the importance of recognition for students mm -hmm. um and so i think that's another piece that we're really focusing on is how are we recognizing our students do they feel recognized do they feel seen um and so just little kind of incentives and things to make sure we're recognizing staff and students and especially those groups that aren't necessarily always recognized mm -hmm. um, has been a focus of ours. Yeah, for sure. So homecoming's over now. Yes. <laughs> in a week or two or yeah. three, depending on. So, <laughs> yes. Big sigh of relief. So that's over. Went really well. A lot of really fun activities and just kind of thinking outside the box and doing the parades differently. Was great. Um, yeah. 
So what, uh, now that you've kind of had a week or maybe two to breathe-ish, what are you looking forward to? What cool things are coming um, up? Well, and like just a little piece on homecoming, like a huge part of that is our students. And then like we have sponsors that are in charge of homecoming week. So by no means are we the exhausted ones. I think student, student council. Student <laughs> council for sure. Um, but yeah, just the like hype of it all and like you know, trying to make sure everything goes well for them. Um, I think now for me, my focus is um, we have a leadership conference coming up that we're both presenting at with our students attending. That's coming up next week. Um, a food drive for Grays Lake Central. That's our all school service project. So we're kicking that off this Friday. If you come to the football game, bring a canned food cool. item and get a chance to win a prize. They're really cool prizes. Um, and then we're doing another first day of school on January 8th with a special schedule oh, and some nice. different things in both buildings. So I think that's um, something we're trying to finalize um, in the next couple of weeks, few weeks here. Yeah, at North, I would say very similar, um, not the food drive, but um, planning for the first day of school. Um, and then we're already starting to plan our big game um, that happens in March. So that's kind of the next big piece that we're working on. And the big game, what is that? Can you Describe um, that a little bit. Yes. It's kind of a so, thing. It's kind of a thing. Um, so the big game is a um, all-school assembly um, that celebrates kindness, um, diversity, inclusion, um, and it is um, our Special Olympics program. Um, plays another Special Olympics program. This year it will be Round Lake. Um, at an all-school assembly, um, and we really just, it's, it's a time for our school to really come together and celebrate inclusion. Um, I think it's kind of a defining event that we have at North mm -hmm. um, that kind of makes us unique. Um, but all of that is already underway. Well, it's a massive <laughs> event. Right. It's just a massive event. What I love about it is, yeah, it's, you have Special Olympics basketball game going on. And no matter what is happening, no matter who has the ball or whatever happens, people are just going nuts, cheering for everything, no matter what team you're on. It's just a lot of fun. Um, I just love watching the rest of our students, not just those who are on the court. Yep. Just um, be kind and be happy for everyone. that group of students, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. So there's a lot of different activities that go on, too. So. Yeah. Now, are you involved, Deanna, with uh, Veterans Day at all? I'm on the planning committee okay. for the assembly, but so much of it goes through our PSP class and our key club. Yeah. Um, so we've been, we meet every two weeks to just finalize that plan. So that is coming up as well. Yeah, it's central. There's a, a big Veterans yeah, Day <laughs> assembly where uh, the school invites any veterans in the area or anywhere. Um, but really, they get a seat of honor sort of in the middle of the field house. All of our students are in there. Um, there's usually a keynote speaker with mm -hmm. some sort of military uh, connection. Um, but it's really good. It's great, I think, for yeah. our community to see that it's something that we really value in the district. Yeah. So. And after the assembly, they get to stay and have breakfast, and they do different presentations in the theater. So social studies classes are all down there, but any teacher can bring their classes down mm -hmm. to hear different speakers throughout the day. Um, so it's really like a whole day thing, but the assembly is where our whole entire student body is part of it. So it's a really great event. Cool. So if you had a student in front of you that wasn't involved in anything, Right, it was just kind of, you know, somebody you'd want to get involved. What would you tell that student? What would you? How would you advise that student? I think for me, right, it's just building a relationship with that student mm -hmm. first. Um, I think it's finding out what are they interested in, um, why why do they like or not like coming to school? Kind of figuring out those behind the scenes reasons of why they're not involved. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like as humans, right, we all want to be involved, so what is that kind of barrier that's holding them back? Um, and then once you kind of have that relationship, then go into kind of the persuasive route <laughs> of trying to find something that they're interested in and helping them make those connections. Yeah. yeah, finding out like if there's a staff member that they're super close to as well. Like sometimes, like our chess program has blown up in different ways because of you know who's running the program mm -hmm. or um, they may not know how to play chess, but they love the teacher that's in charge of it or, or any of our clubs. Like the, the staff members really help that. So finding out like what they like, pointing them in the direction to get information so it's not just that 20 minutes that they're with you. So like the website or our social media. 
Um, and then like we have link crew and ambassadors in both, you know, in the buildings to like get them connected with an upperclassman to like just learn some more information of what's out there leadership wise, whether they're a freshman or a transfer or a senior who just hasn't been involved yet. I think a lot of that too is just helping them once we identify the barriers, right? How do you break those barriers down? So mm -hmm. is it an equity piece? Is it transportation? Is it, you know, what is that? And then seeing what resources we have to kind of help them with that. Yeah, we should probably pull this data. We used to report to the board every year, like how many students, what percent of students are involved in mm -hmm. whether it's athletics or activities or something during the school year. It was in the high 80%. Mm -hmm. Every, I cannot, I would not doubt that it's a lot higher <laughs> right now. And that's unheard of, right? That just doesn't yeah. really happen in a lot of places in my opinion. So it's awesome. So and it's so hard to track some of that yeah, too. Like, like we don't track how many kids go to football games or basketball games yet. Well, there's right, ways to do that. Right. We want like, yeah, we really want to. <laughs> Interesting. This may not be the place to push for that. <laughs> yeah. But there are ways to do that where they can like scan into events mm -hmm. and have incentives. But like there is a lot of involvement or engagement that we aren't tracking. Mm -hmm. And that that's the information that we're hoping to, to gain. Um, because there's kids that simply, like, you know, they work or they take care of the family right. or whatever the case is, but that doesn't mean they're not engaged or involved. Mm -hmm. But because they don't have that club title listed to their, you know, their resume of what they're in, there's still ways for them to be engaged that they do feel connected. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, something that we're, we're hoping to help build on. Cool. We have some ideas. <laughs> if anyone wants, if anyone wants to see, see my 40 that. slide PowerPoint. Well, my next <laughs> question is kind of like where do you see this going like what what kinds of things would you like to do in the future kind of blue sky dream big kinds of activities what would you like to see happen Are you just, the program or, yeah. oh there is a program that could help do a lot of this um where they literally scan in mm -hmm. and like that's where we want to be able to just get them excited and you can have incentives and just find that kid that is connected that's not in a club or a sport, I think mm -hmm. is big. Like we do have kids that come to our office and want leadership opportunities, but they can't come Wednesdays after school to be part of this group. So I think just student life is more than that club, that sport, mm -hmm. um, that class. Like it's about the whole experience. The whole experience. Like mm -hmm. you guys have the whole night or we have the Ramley, like really what that means. Um, and I think two streamlining stuff that's a big goal of mine, mm. big picture, is there's a lot of silos of really, really great things happening, I think, in both buildings and in all departments. And a way to put that together is like a big vision of mine, mm -hmm. um, of ours, and having more collaboration. And, you, oh, you both want to do this fundraiser, this service project, let's do it together. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's happening slowly. I think we have, like, you know, BSU is meeting up with Snowball this next week. So that's exciting. Oh, wow. But having cool. more of that... So one, kids get a little bit more awareness of what other groups are doing, and they don't feel like, well, this is our project. It's There's, everyone can work on, on mm -hmm. something together. There's also so much crossover between our clubs, uh, specifically, I would say, our leadership clubs. A lot of the same students in you know, a National Honor Society, in Student Council, in Link Crew, in Ambassadors. Um, so utilizing that and kind of pulling all of our resources together to have different clubs kind of collaborate mm -hmm. um, is a goal of ours. Yeah. And classroom time too. Mm -hmm. I think a lot like mm -hmm. we have 60, 70 sponsors like oh, that work in our building that are, you know, involved in a club or they also coach. Like there's just, there already is this like built in connection and just trying to put that all together and have, we talk about cross curricular and working with different departments, but also within clubs. And I think Knights Block and Rams Block is a great opportunity, a great start to be able to have time during the school day for kids to feel connected um, outside of just, you know, the academic piece of school. Um, so I think there's a lot of systems in place. I think it's, we still have a, a lot that we want to improve on and grow. Um, like you said, it's only October. I can't believe it's yeah, only October. Yeah, I feel like I don't need, like, there's also, like, the unknown of what we What we, we could do. Because we don't yeah. know what we have sometimes yeah. so just continuing to learn more about like different departments and you know we work closely with our athletic departments I think naturally just because it's after school so we know a lot about like, you know when's the after school bus available and how does a fundraiser work 
but I think we've both had a new partnership or I've had a continued mm -hmm. partnership with our wellness and prevention coordinators. So things that Kate Oldenburg and I have been able to work together on the creation of Rambassadors has been huge this year. Um, and just making kids feel connected and welcoming new students. Um, and we have our wellness day and how we're gonna work together on doing a multicultural fair and how that fits in with all of these different pieces. So I think just more collaborating with staff is also encouraging more collaboration within students is helpful too. And I think in this role too, working with, I work with Joe Alger at North and I think Right, there's an expertise that he has that I don't have. Right. As, and a, so, as a prevention and wellness counselor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and just that counseling piece, that clinical yeah. piece that I, I, I don't have a background mm -hmm. in that. And so I think working there, him and I have been working very closely with Nice Black and Homeroom. Um, and so I think just seeing a different lens of student life as far as different groups that he runs or SEL lessons, um, it's just kind of widened my kind of knowledge of what student life is versus mm -hmm. just student activities. Yes. Yeah, it helps just the collaboration piece that, you know, we have each other, which is huge because we have two different buildings that have mm -hmm. different goals or different things that we want to do and how we can share and make it our own. And then now having, you know, another department that wants to work with us that we want to yeah. work with. Like I think yeah. the four of us even are going to be working together on some things that's helpful. That's great. So, um, if a student were interested in getting involved in something, how might they get a hold of you? A um, few different ways. One, um, now we're, I don't want to say always available, but for the most part, our availability Not right now. <laughs> has widened. Um, so finding us in our office, sending a quick email to schedule a time. Um, I also think asking a, like another student, like, hey, how do I get involved? I think sometimes they receive that even better than talking to an adult. Um, so I always encourage kids to ask their friends, what are they involved in? How did they get involved? Um, other pieces are show up to a meeting. We both have activity calendars. Um, activities are nice in a sense that you can come and go and you don't have to be there every time. And yeah. so I think it's a, it's a little bit more of a welcoming environment in a sense that if you, you, know, if you miss tryouts, you miss tryouts. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. Coming to see me, I think, is my favorite. Like, I'd yeah. rather have face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face, but kids are pretty good at email, and we get a fast response if they just need a quick answer. But it's great when they can just come in and share and collaborate with us. But, yeah, I think our office is being kind of in good locations for kids to be able to come see us. Um, email, Schoology, Remind, like, there are I've, a lot of different ways for them to I've hopefully reach us. I've walked some students to the activity yeah. meeting and sat there until they felt good. So whatever yeah. whatever they need, I think we're both willing to do. Yeah. And parent communication. Like, I think they are trying to do more of that so that the parents are aware of what's going on, too. Right. Um, to encourage their students to come see us or email us. Cool. Anything else for the good of the cause? It's great. It's really informative and helpful. I think we're always looking for ideas from kids. So yeah. if there's stuff that they want or they think would be really great, like we're always, I feel like our doors are literally always, always open, open now. <laughs> for them to come in and like share or talk to their sponsor of their club and then they come in. Um, and coaches too, I feel like we've worked yeah. with more of them recently too. Great. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, I know you guys are just kind of getting started and getting things off the ground, but there's a lot happening, so looking forward to where it goes next. It's exciting. So are we. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good deal. Once again, thanks very much, Keely Nam, the rep, Student Life Coordinators at Grays Lake North and Grays Lake Central High Schools. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.